Hi and welcome back to the third part of the WebXR Dependenza VRTK Web Export sample. And this time we're trying to implement the VR bowling sample from VRTK because a lot of you guys asked how can I use this? Um, what are the interactions, the input actions that you defined and so on? And I decided to just give it a shot. I already implemented it. It's already in the GitHub repo, in the samples folder. I'll just show you when you click on assets, there is the VR bowling sample. Hopefully I'll be able to implement a few more samples based on the VRTK YouTube tutorials. Everything is in the VR bowling folder from scenes to materials to scripts. And I'll just walk you through everything. And before starting, I'll just show you where you find the tutorial itself. Well, there is a video on YouTube, but for this time I decided to go with the written tutorial to just give you a better reference point. And one more thing, I already built up all the environmental stuff. So I already placed the cubes, placed the lane, placed everything without the scripts and cleared everything so we can start from scratch. First of all, let's go to the VRTK site, click on the Academy button and the Academy button will lead us to an overview on how to guide tutorials and so on. Just click on tutorials. And the first link here is making a VR bowling game. I just opened it here. The GitHub repository of VR bowling has this description, which will walk us through the whole tutorial. These are three parts and we'll just start with the first one, but starting would be a better way by just having a look at the sample scene. I created here a new scene, bowling scene empty and cleared everything. I'm not quite sure, but I will very likely upload this empty scene as well. So you can start at a similar level as I do, but feel free to just clone the template scene, which is in the scenes folder and clear everything. I'll just show you around in a second and start from scratch. It's a good practice and you can always learn something from following such tutorials. So first of all, um, everyone who's already familiar with the template scene, there is the WebXR camera set. We will not touch this here. This is just as is. Everything is already set up to work with VRTK. I already imported VRTK. All the packages we need are already imported. And I want to mention again, there is no need for you to import input packages or something like this. Already, is, everything is already set up. And you can basically start every VRTK tutorial here. The next thing is the spectator camera holder. We, wa we won't need that object as well. And the camera extract alias here is just a small thing. When you go to aliases, left and right controller alias. Oh, there is an intact on the left side. I'll just delete that. Here we go. That's the empty scene and everything is empty now. It's just the prefab that VRTK provides set up with the WebXR camera set. Here under the input actions, I cleared the proxy object. There is a proxy object usually here and I disabled the hands object for hand tracking. So everything we do will be based on the controller interactions, which are not changed at all. So you can query them all and use them all in a VRTK way based on these Boolean actions and will basically very quickly start with everything else. Then here's the environment. It's a bowling lane with the floor, the bumpers, back, back bumper, a backstop in this case, the green sphere, here is the bowling ball um, and there is a logic object which we will use to place some logic here for having all the bowling stuff happening. So let's have a look at the tutorial. What does it say? I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. So reading will be a little, a little bit easier. Here we go. We are bowling game. Very easy to become accustomed to basic VR interactions prerequisites, everything is already set up. So we'll skip that. Let's start. Okay. We'll create the floor here. I'll skip the two um, floor material, bowling lane, everything is already in place. Okay. That's fine. 
Um, we have the left bumper, the right bumper, there's box collider on it. A uh, bowling pin mesh, I already downloaded it. It's under models here. This is the bowling pin mesh provided. Um, the skill factor is set. Okay, um, bowling pin. Yes, okay. Capsule collider, box collider. Material. Um, the formation, I already set up the position so you won't have to do it. And this is the first step where I already told you we won't need any input helpers. So it's not necessary to import this package. Okay, let's go on. Okay, that's the manifest way. That's the old way of doing it. For everyone who wants to import any VRTK package, as I said, in this case, except for the input packages, it's always helpful to go to window, tell your package importer, and here is everything what you will need on components and predefined packages that you can work with VRTK, for instance, the snap zone, climbing, movement amplifier, teleport targets, and so on. This project is already set up, so let's go back to the tutorial. Um, the manifest JSON, yeah, that's okay. Adding the tracked Elias, okay, finally we'll maybe do something here, adding a tracked Elias. I already did that. Adding a unit TXR camera is not necessary. So everything I did was adding the tracked Elias and set up the WebXR camera set based on the previous videos and on the video from the Panther. Uh, fused VR, sorry, sorry. And let's go um, track the lies, track the lies. Okay. Input manager is not needed here. That's also the input manager and adding an interactor. Okay. Now it's time to add an interactor. And how do I add an interactor? We go to the controller where this interactor must be dropped. Here it's the add an interactor how to guide. Let's see. Um, input control objects, input red control buttons. We don't need that here. Okay, that's one too far here. Game object, Tilia, prefabs, interactions, interactors, interactions interactor. While this seems like a very long path, it's actually pretty fast done. I'll right click in the hierarchy go to the Tilia po um, menu point, prefabs, interactions, interactors, interactions, interactor, click here. And I have the interactor object. I'll just name it left interactor, duplicate it with control D, press F2 for renaming and name this one the right interactor. And now in the camera rigs folder, left controller, right controller, I'll just make the left interactor a child of the left controller and the right interactor a child of the right controller. Here we go. And now I have to do two more things. There is the velocity tracker over here. It's on the controller Elias object and the grab action. I have to tell the interactor now which action will be used for grabbing. And this is where the magic happens now. You go to controller. I don't know, I'm, for this we choose the right controller, go to the grip button and use the right grip press object and drop it here because there is a Boolean action which will return true when the right grip button is pressed. We will do the same for the left side. So open the left controller, left grip button, left grip press for grabbing and adding the velocity tracker for them from the left controller Elias. Here we go. And everything for our interactor is already set up. Hi, Max from the future speaking. I just discovered a mistake while testing, so um, I'll just try to fit it into the video so you can see it beforehand, so not, you're not running into any issues. Because I moved track Elias beforehand to minus eight and then added the interactors. Every interactor is now at the origin position and has a Z position of plus eight, which is not the case we wanted it to be. The local positions here should always stay at zero, zero, zero. So you will just have to add it here to make it to zero and on the right side too. 
that everything will fall into place. Otherwise, the offset of the interactors will be eight meters and you will not be able to grab your bowling ball. So make sure to keep that in mind. Well, yeah, that's it. Let's go back to the tutorial or the how to guide in this case, grab action. Okay, we place the grab action here. The velocity tracker is also placed and everything is done. So we already added the interactor, that's fine. And now we're trying to create the bowling ball. There is a sphere, I already created the sphere, created the material. And now we can simply select the ball object, open the Tilia interactable creator window and convert this to an interactable. So this means that the ball can be grabbed by the controller and will behave when you uh, correctly when you throw it or when you snap it or something else. So going back to Unity, I'll just minimize this stuff over here. There is the bowling ball object. I'll call it bowling ball. Now I open the window, window, Tilia, Tilia is over here, the interactions and interactable creator. And while the bowling ball is selected, I'll click on convert to interactable and the Tilia converter, closing the window, just converted this to an interactable. I'll name it, oh, it already has the name bowling ball, that's fine. And the how to guide will now show the settings for this. Here we go. Two actions that can occur when grabbing. The primary action is to grab it. And the secondary action in this case is to swap it. So we'll just switch into the interactable facade. This is the main component here. Primary action to grab, follow. Grab offset is precision point. So it actually is there where we grabbed it. And the secondary action is grab action swap. Switch back to Unity, okay, interactable facade from a bowling ball. The primary action, grab action follows. So we're grabbing it and it follow us, follows us. Grab offset is precision point. And the secondary action is swap. Here we go. And we're already able to grab a ball and throw it around. Let's go on further. Okay, if you now play the bowling scene, okay. Um, there are just a few optimizations, I already did that. And that's the first step of creating a simple bowling game. And instead of now every time switching back and so on, I'll just continue to the next step, expanding the bowling game. Click over here, this is the second point. And let's see if we can expand it in the same way as we started here. Step one, physics materials uh, would help us by the bumpers. We'll just um, work around that with rigid bodies and a script. And here we go. We can now add a collision tracker to a bumper game objects that will check if the sphere collides with our bumper and will then with a custom script that's also already added. Um, make the ball bounce from our bumper wall. Okay, so get, let's go back to the Unity project environment. Here's the lane, the left bumper and the right bumper. Rigid body, box collider, and the collision tracker. This is this one. And there is the new script and we add the bumper script here. Both are selected, the bumper, there is the bumper script. I'll just move it up to have it above here. The script is a single method called bounce. Blah, 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 blah. Collision tracker. Okay, I made a mistake here. We should add the bumper script to the lane game object. Okay, sorry about that, I'll just Remove it here, Take these two and here. Ah, okay, I forgot to delete this, so it's already here, so well. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. Let's say I just added it to the lane object. 
Now we need to hook up our collision trackers. Left and right one collision started. And we're just adding a collision started um, event and call bounce every time a collision is started. Okay, we're selecting the two bumpers, go to the collision trigger, collision started, adding an event by adding via the plus symbol, dragging the lane object here and under functions, we're going to bumper to bounce. Save the scene and everything should be set up according to the how to. We can now roll the ball down the lane and we hit the bumpers. Okay, nice. That's cool. Uh, next thing, a ball has to come back when it reaches the end of the lane. Okay, this, these are the pins. Transform properties. Okay, I already did that the backstop by creating a new um, cube object. The backstop is also already here. Uh, set up the logic. Okay, I already created the logic object and there is an empty object as child, which is called reset ball position. Create empty reset ball position. And zero one two five minus seven point five minus seven point five over here. Okay, so it's at the beginning of the lane. I think I forgot to add the correct ball um, position and scaling. We'll just have a look at it in a second. And this object here. Okay, transform property applier will be added here, the transform property applier object. Reset ball position, transform property applier. Here it is. Okay. And this will reset the position of a ball and we'll just have to use the interactable ball as a target and the reference setting is the reset ball position. Okay. Reference setting source is the reset ball position and the target is our bowling ball. There we go. There is no offset needed, no local values and apply transformations position. Okay. Right, transformations, nothing, and then select position. <clears throat> okay, select the logic reset ball position, click add component, rig body property mutator. That's the next one, rig body property mutator. Here we go. And the target is the rigid body of the ball, I guess. I guess, sorry. The interactable ball rigid body, here we go. Couple of components here, what you can logic, the empty event proxy emitter, logic reset ball, add component, empty event proxy emitter. And add component, okay. Then we simply call the receive method on the empty, okay. One, two, three. Rigid body mutate, clear velocity, clear angular velocity, and apply from the transfer property apply. Okay. Add three events, one, two, three. And then add the rigid body property mutator here for the first two. And the third object was the transform property applier. It's the third one. And then go to the property mutator and let's say clear velocity. 
clear angular velocity. There we go. And the third method was apply. Here we go. Okay, that's the empty event proxy emitter. Logic is set up. Use the collision tracker component again. Lane backstop at a rigid body. The rigid body is already there. Make it kinematic and add to the backstop the collision tracker component. Environment lane backstop collision tracker. And on collision started, reset ball position. Okay. And use the receive event from the empty event proxy emitter. Okay. Reset ball position over here, empty event proxy emitter, and the receive event. So every time our ball will hit the backstop, the empty proxy event emitter will reset our ball position. Okay, that's fine. That's the backstop, step three. Before going over to step three, I'm just going back to step one, checking everything from the ball, because I think I forgot to change the ball size. Track the liars, input manager, interactor. Okay, that's fine. This is the sphere object, okay, which has a scale and a position and we'll just place the interactor now in the right position. Zero, okay. And minus 7.5, there we go. It's now on the correct position and the interactable is here. And usually you can scroll down in the inspector and go to show mesh container. There's a button down here, which will jump to the mesh container. And within the mesh container is usually your object. And as we saw, there is a scale on the object. In the ball, it's over here, 0 0.25 three times. Okay, we're just linking up the scale. Here we go. And that's it. A bowling ball is now smaller, like the size of a regular bowling ball. I guess I'm not that experienced with bowling, but I guess this should basically be fine. Maybe it's something that I haven't mentioned before. The camera tracked Elias has a different position with Z minus eight. So um, our starting position will write at the beginning of the lane. You can't see it here now, but this will work out of the box. So no worries. And it's already stated in the um, tutorial here and on YouTube, of course. So um, feel free to change that if your bowling lane looks slightly different. And now we have the very simple bowling game finished. And we have to now add custom scripts to our pins. There is a pin prefab. Okay, everything will be done here and the pin script added. Okay, that's the code, talking about the code. If you're interested, feel free to, to read through all that. I'll just um, skip over it and check what to do here. Okay, we're just trying to add everything to the pin. Um, the pin prefab is already set up here. Here you go, there is the pin script and the collision tracker script already on it. But this case, we will just um, do it manually. And as the tutorial states, adding the pin script for every pin, I'll just select in the pins here and adding the pin script. Okay. And the next step, we need a collision tracker and calling the check topple method when something hits our pin. So again, as we did before, adding a collision tracker. 
go to the collision started event. Here we go. And now we have to do it for every pin to link up the pin here. Go over here and use the pin uh, check topple method. Okay, we have to do that for every pin now. Um, I will just remove this component, remove this component and go back to the state as, as they were before, just to save some time here. Um, revert all. And everything is already set up. As you can see here, every pin has now a collision tracker and a pin script on, on it and they're checking for the check topple method here. Here we go, the check topple method. Okay, every pin in the scene is now a new pin script collision tracker. And they will disappear a few seconds after falling over. That's the basic thing here. Straight pointer. Okay, I have the feeling that we just forgot something. No, no, I did. We'll see afterwards when testing. Um, we'll just go on here. Um, we now need a pointer, a, a straight pointer for ha having our interaction method to click on UI. And again, there is no need for the um, input actions here. We will t now adding just a straight pointer. Here's the how to guide again. So just scrolling it down here, spatial simulator, we don't need the button action, we will need that object pointers unit package share, package will be added. And Tilia prefabs indicators, object pointers, indicators, object pointers, straight. Okay, just minimize it here. Save the scene and right click Tilia prefabs, indicators, object pointers, object pointers straight. And I want to have it on the right side, so I'll just call it R dot indicators object pointer straight. Pull it down in the hierarchy to have it down here. And now we see the follow source, the activation action, a selection action for everything that we need to do. And it already tells us how to set it up. So the follow source will be the right controller alias. Okay, we'll do that. Track the lies, aliases. Right controller Elias will be the follow source. <coughs> Straight point uh, Boolean action activate blah 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 blah. The button action. So for VR, I guess having a pointer and selecting something should be the trigger. So the activation action should be the right trigger. Let's go to input actions, controller, right controller, and the trigger, and it's trigger touch. Activate it on touching. And the selection should be trigger press. We can also use the trigger press method here for both. Uh, let's see how the how to guide handles it. Button action here. Um, let's see, trackpad touch, trackpad press. Yeah, well, that's more or less the same way as I set it up here. So right trigger touch and right trigger press and to select on activate. You feel free to play around and, and maybe find your own way of, of activating the pointer and using it. And that's now a straight pointer and we need spatial buttons. And that's also here in the how to guide in the next one. I'll just close the old one, adding a spatial button here. Um, let's see, adding a click button, button action. We already have that. The selection action, we have that too. Yes. And the next thing we need is the spatial. Dispatcher, game object, Tilia, prefabs, indicators, spatial targets, indicator, spatial targets, dispatcher. I minimize that again. Here we go. Save the scene. Right click Tilia, prefabs, indicators, spatial targets, spatial targets, dispatcher. Here we go. Just drag it down here. You can also feel free to regroup everything with empty game objects and so on. I'll just leave it here for better visibility. And the next step is to set up the enter, exit and select events here. So 
we'll go here to enter it, edit the indicators object pointer straight here and do dispatch enter and do the same for exit and select. So let's go here. This is the uh, indicator special targets dispatcher. Have I done the right way here? Let's see. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. Indicators object pointer here, uh, entered, exited, selected. Adding a clicked object here, an uh, event object here, 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 and let's drag in the indicators dispatcher onto all three. And in the entered block, we'll just special targets do dispatch enter, exited, do dispatch, do, do dispatch exit, sorry, and do dispatch select. So everything is set up for our Dispatcher, save the scene here, go back to the how to guide. Uh, here we go. That's the overview again. Click button. I think that's not. Ah, yes. Okay, sure. That's the thing we still have to do. I'm not quite sure how the how to guide here will work. Okay, the click button here, reset ball bar. Okay, we'll just add the first click button going to all game object, Tilia, prefabs, interactions, spatial buttons, interactions, spatial button, click button. Here we go. Uh, right click, Tilia, prefabs, interactions, spatial buttons, interaction, spatial button, click button. Let's call it reset ball interactions the dot interactions special button click button here we go added this one going back to the tutorial reset ball button changing the transform 1.5 1.5 minus 7.5 okay and the rotation is 40 degrees in the y and enabled interactive enabled hoover will all be called reset ball i'll just copy this here and change the text according to the how to guide reset ball here we go again okay And let's go to the activated event spatial button facade component and adding the reset ball position. Okay, button events activated plus logic the reset ball position. And we need to select the receive. Yeah, the receive function. Here we go. Empty event proxy meet the receive function. That's for resetting the position not only when the ball hits the back bumper, but only when clicking the button with a pointer. And the last thing we'll look at doing in this tutorial is to reset the pins. Okay, there is a pin group script here already added. As I said before, feel free to read that yourself. And the pin group object will be added to the pins game object. Okay, in the environment, the lane pins. Here we add the pin group script. This will work like intended. And now we just need another click button. I'll just duplicate. No, oh, let's do it the, the usual way. Just right click Tilia. Prefabs, interactions, spatial, uh, spatial buttons, click button. Here we go. And this will be our reset pins button. Minimize this, minimize this, drag it down here. And the coordinates were 1.5, 1.1, 1 
1.5 minus 7.5. Okay, the rotation will be 40 degrees here as well. And let's see, the text is reset pins. Okay, well, I could have figured that out alone. And let's just change the text here. Here we go, and we'll of course need an event for the activated stuff. When clicking it, let's see, okay, that's everything we already know. Drag the pins object here and pin group reset positions function. Okay, um, environment, pins, pin group, reset positions. Okay, done, and everything should now work. Let's see, there was a third tutorial converting it to Unity 2020. I'm pretty sure we won't need that, but let's have a look. Tilia package, XR input system, we won't need that here. Plugin management, we won't need that here as well. Camera rigs, plug-in framework, no, that's not needed here. Generics is, are not needed. Pointer facades, that's from the new interaction stuff. Okay, we won't need it here. So let's have a look at our project. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> I think everything is set up now. And I'll just repeat the steps here that we did the last time for deploying our project just to give you a good impression that this will work pretty easy. Go to build settings, add open scene. I'll just delete the bowling scene here, adding the empty scene, switch your target to WebGL, click on the build button. I already created a build folder. Everything's already set up with the Vite, um package, the Vite package. Feel free to check out the other videos. I'm just selecting the folder, letting it build. Here we go, everything completed. We're just opening the build folder. Everything's in here. Opening Visual Studio Code. Everything's already set up from the last time. And we can now go to npx beat. As you see, everything is now running, up and running in our local network. I'll just copy the address here. Paste it in my browser. Here we go. And everything seems to be running. Okay. And now we're switching to our VR headset and let's test it out. So now we're in the browser on our VR headset and jump into it. So let's see the controllers are here, the interacts are here. I can press the buttons, I can touch the trigger, the pointer is revealed. And when I point at the button, it turns green. And when I click, the button will be pressed, I can grab the ball, I can throw the ball. I'm obviously not very good at bowling. So let's see if we can make a one zero like it's in informatics in IT. Okay, let's do it again. Reset the ball, reset the pins, everything is at start. Grab it, throw it. Well, I'm again, not that good. At least one pin, reset the ball. Here it is. Try to throw it in another way. Well, that seems to work out a little bit better. Yep, looking good. And here's the ball, here's the buttons. Well, for a simple game, that's all you need. You can reset everything, everything is at start, and well, that's it. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Um, ring the bell, like this video, comment beneath if you want to see more of these tutorials, just drop a comment. Um, I'm also happy to hear your experiences. Maybe you implemented a prototype with this yourself and um, feel free to share and see you soon. Bye.